everything that's not pleasing to him and he can bless you and multiply your blessings, I want to say a prayer. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity to stand before you and teach, Lord, and help me. Father God, because I can do nothing without you, Lord. Come on the scene, Lord. Anoint your holy scriptures, Lord. Father God, hide me behind the cross, Lord. Don't let them see me, but let them see Jesus, Lord. Bless your scriptures and help us today, Lord, to feed and to, to uh, get at that banquet table and get ready for a feast in your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Bless you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let me get this back here first. Now let me tell you that God is good all the time. Yes, yes. we're going to read some in the Bible. But uh, right now I want to say God is good. G means for grace. O means for over. O means for obstacles. And it means daily. He will, he will help you daily. God is good all the time. He is our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider, our comforter, our corrector, and our father. I love that, knowing he's going to correct me. And I want him to correct me. If I hurt somebody or I'm out of line, I want the Lord to come down and correct me. Because I want the light of Jesus to be in my life and to please Jesus. I don't want to please man or please uh uh, please, uh, the devil. Amen. Thank you, brother. But I want to go right now. I got several things we're going to look up in the Bible, but I'm going right now in my favorite verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace and a well-being and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. We need God, and we are no good without Him. Amen. He promises that He will find. We, he promises that we will find Him if we seek Him. He is waiting for us to call on Him and talk to Him about every aspect of our lives. Yes, amen. He wants to hear us say that we need Him and we love Him, and that He is vital necessity in our lives. I've started now getting up in the morning and say on Saturdays and all during the week, Lord, what do you want to do today? Me and you, what do you want me to do to help somebody to uh, to shine my light, to invite them to church, call somebody, go visit somebody. Don't let the devil defeat you uh, about not inviting people to church. And don't stop because the devil says, well, they're not never going to come. Don't stop. Just keep going forward. You push. You press. You press for the prize of the high calling of God. Yes, amen. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna look up these uh, Bible verses. Let me find that other part of this. I got scribbles up here everywhere. Okay, here it is. Yeah, I studied on this all week. And also, whatever things you ask for in prayer, in accordance with God's will, in God's will, believe. Yes. Yeah. With a confident trust that you have received them and they will be given to you. Mark 11, 24. Whatever we can ask in the name of Jesus in prayer and believe, it can be given to you. Yes, amen. You know, the God, God wants to provide for you. He loves you. He loves you so much. Wow. Let's go to Luke 10, 19. I wanted to read that verse. I'm shaking up here. I'm so nervous. God is good all the time. These Bible uh, pages stick together. They're, they're precious, precious God's word. Okay. Listen carefully. I have given you authority that you now possess to tread on serpents and scorpions 
and the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy, which is Satan. And nothing will in any way harm you. God's giving you power. Ain't that good? No. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful that we don't have to fear. We have to reverence God and respect God and honor God. But praise the Lord, He's given us a spirit that we can. Have, we don't have to fear Him. He's given us power, love, and a sound mind. Help me over here, Brother Derek. <laughs> Prayer changes things. Prayer is powerful. You know, it's a language, just like your tears are a language God understands. I used to be a big old crybaby in church, and my husband would fuss on me. He said, you cry too much. I said, I can't help it. I'm just, it's right after I had my babies and stuff, and I guess I was emotional. And, uh, he, and, and he said, quit that crying. I said, I can't help it. I said, I just feel the Lord. I said, I feel him. And I, now I'm not crybaby no more. But the Lord moved in my life while I was doing that. It says, trust God, lean not to your own understanding, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Submit to God, and the devil will have to flee in the name of Jesus. Okay, now we're going to go to three words that he wants. Uh, okay. God is good always. He wants you to rest. That means repose, and it means peace of mind or spirit. If you look, I looked it up, and it meant sleep, but we don't need to sleep in the Lord. We need to wake it up and become a fire on the Lord. You know, that rest, but it says that God wants you to rest in Him. Man. He don't want you to tarry, because like Bobby's cutting grass right now, instead of being in church. And I told him, I said, grass don't need cutting. It's dead. I said, uh, you need to come to church. But uh, y'all pray for him. He's still got that uh, swelling in his arm, like that inflammation in his arm. And uh, I told him, I said, I want you to come next Sunday with me, and I'm going to start on him again this week. And he's going to tell me I wish you'd hush, but I'm going to start on him. But uh, I've been on the phone inviting to the homecoming, inviting friends. I went visiting Friday and invited some friends to the church and then the homecoming. So I hope they come. They told me they'd like to. Okay, rest on the seventh day. Uh, that was found in Genesis 2, 2. And uh, we're going to go to that. If you want to look, look it up. Genesis 2, 2. I'm in Exodus. Genesis. Now, God created this earth, and it's beautiful. Man is trying to, and I'm not against man, and some women are trying to ruin it and stuff. But God has created a beautiful, you can get up in the morning and see the skies coming out and set it out in the evenings and see the skies, the sun set, and it's beautiful. It said in Genesis 2, 2, and by the seventh day, God completed his work, which he had done. He rested, seized on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. You know, God rested on the seventh day. I believe we need to. We need to make Sunday just a church day. Visit friends and loved ones or go uh, pray more, read your Bible more. You need to do that all week long. But praise the Lord. He, he says for us to rest. Okay? When he giveth you rest, Deuteronomy 12.10. We're just going to find that. I wanted to look this up. Deuteronomy. Bless your Lord. Praise the Lord. If y'all want to say anything, y'all go right ahead. Deuteronomy 12.10.
when you cross the Jordan and live in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to inherit, and he gives you rest from all your enemies around you so that you live in security. You know, it says somewhere in the Bible that the, the Lord's prepared a table before our enemies for us. The Lord, what? Shep, the Lord of... Uh, 23rd Psalm, see? Me lie down in green pastures. That verse. And that's a powerful verse. Okay, now we're going to go to trust. And trust... You know, trust is that you believe that someone or something is reliable, good, honest, effective. And put your trust in the Lord. Keep your eyes on God. Don't keep it on man because man will fail you. And man's not perfect, neither is woman. But God is. God is perfect. God is love. And that's what we need. We need the Lord of God in our heart. In our families, we need more of God on our jobs. We put God first, put our family second, put our jobs third. Put Him first in your life. Okay, we're going to go to Matthew 11, 28, 29. That's the first book in the New Testament. Praise the Lord. I love the scriptures. They're just so powerful. The Holy Word will help you when you get up in the morning and you feel like your day's not going good. and You just don't feel right, you know. You have days like that. Get in that Word and you can feel the Holy Ghost come over you and He will move that block that hindered you from your day to begin your day. Begin in the Word. Begin in prayer. Take time to pray for your brothers and sisters. For their needs. 28, 29, and 30. Come to me, all who are weary and heavenly burdened. I will provide peace and I will give you rest, refreshing your souls with salvation. I'm going to read down the Amplified. I know Brother Ken told me I need to read down the King James. I meant to bring it, but I love my. Amplified. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, following me as my disciple. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest, renewal, blessed, quiet for your soul. For my yoke is easy to bear and my burden is light. Ain't that good? It is. Oh, I love that. We can have that rest, that, that, that peace of mind. That joy unspeakable and full of glory. If we delight ourselves in the Lord, He will give you the desires of your heart. Oh, praise the Lord, Brother Ken. He sure will. That's a promise. Yes, ma'am. There's a lot of promises in the Bible, all throughout. Okay, now we're going to go to obey. Now that's a rough one right there obedience. God wants obedience, He does desire it, He desires for you to hear from Him. For you to talk to him every day, to invite him in your life, to let him take part. Because there's nothing out there in the world. I know there's nothing out there. I went for so many years, thought I was living it up, but I was killing myself. Come on, you know? sis. I didn't have no money. I didn't have good health. Didn't really have no good friends. But until the Lord oh, moved in my life. Saying. Hallelujah, Sandra. Oh, yes. He put friends in my life. Yes, he saved my soul. He convicted me of my sin. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. We was down at Pearl City, and it was me and Mama and June Owens that runs the barbecue shack. I ain't never seen such a sight with uh, Mama and me, and I shouted all over the place. Before I knew it, I went down between two pews. Didn't hurt my head or nothing. And I was so excited. The Lord keeps you. He protects you. Yes, he yes, saves yes. you. Oh, I just love him so much. Yeah. To obey means to comply with orders. And we're going to go to wins and see obey Matthew 8, 27. said, the men wondered in amazement, saying, what kind of man is this 
that even the winds and the sea obey him. Mm, that's powerful words. You know, we don't need to, uh, what would you say, uh, stop uh, thinking about what Jesus has done in the Bible. He can still do it today through us. It says that he's left us and he sent the comforter. And we will do the works of Jesus. We will see people saved in Amen. Family. It's a promise. God has promised that. Then we're going to go, and they do obey him. Mark 127. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. They were all amazed that they debated and questioned each other, saying, What is this? A new teaching and authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, demons, and they obey him. You know, God, Jesus had that much power. Mm -hmm. You know, people were questioning and didn't like him. Some liked him and honored him, his mother and some of the disciples. Okay, let's go to... Uh, Obey my voice. That's back in Jeremiah 7.23. says, But this thing I did command them, Listen to and obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and you will walk in the, all the way which I commanded you, so that it may be well with you. I want to read this right here. It says, God's heart, God, godly hearts produce godly words. You know, we need to get up every morning and say, Lord, put a guard on my mouth. Don't let me offend nobody. Don't let me offend God. Don't let me say anything wrong that will hurt me or hurt God. You know, we can, the Holy Ghost won't work in your life if you don't honor God and if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. If you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, he won't work. But if you ask forgiveness, the Holy Ghost will work. It says, Jeremiah warned about one who, with his mouth, speaks peace to his neighbor. But in his heart, he lays traps and waits in ambush for him. Jeremiah 9, 8. Along the same lines, Jesus warned the Pharisees, How can you speak good things when you are evil? For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. Matthew 12, 34. Proverbs 16, 23 says, The heart of the wise instructs his mouth in wisdom, also showing us that our words come from and, and are true expressions from our hearts. We've got to keep that clean heart. Amen. Clean mind. We've got to keep that mind of Christ. And don't let the devil defeat you and say, You don't need it. Uh, he ain't working no more these days. Oh, yes, he is, because yes, he's put a change in my life, yes. in my home. He's helped me. He speaks to me. He tells me what verses to study and read and pray. To speak godly words, our hearts need to be right with God. When our hearts are right, we will choose right thoughts. And that will produce right words. When a thought comes into your mind that you know will not bear good fruit, or it's not pleasing to God, cast it out as though you are hurling it up from your mind. Cast it out. Say, that's not of God. I don't need that thought in my mind. And the devil will put it in there. He will he will bring he will bring people to to in your life or that'll help you and pray for you and bless you. Then he'll bring the, the people the devil will bring the people that will confuse you, but don't the author Jesus is no author of confusion. Yes. He is whole and completely 
and he's powerful. Refuse to take it and meditate on it, but rather replace it with something that will produce joy and peace in your life. You know, God has given us the armor of God. I've, I've studied some on that, and I love the armor of God. It's your helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth. Your loins are girded up with the truth. It's your feet are shod with preparation of peace. You have the, the sword. You have the, the uh, shield of faith to fight off the uh, fight off the very fiery darts of the enemy. When he comes up, don't just swing your shield around and say, I don't need it. Hold it up and let it let them darts bang right off of it and uh, your his word will be brought forth in your life. Bless your Lord. The devil don't want the word to be brought forth in your life. He wants you to go around defeated and uh, with no energy. He wants you to be helpless. But God wants to provide for you. He is our provider, like I said a while ago. He is our sustainer. He is our creator. He's our protector. He protects us. He puts that hedge of protection around us. That He can, I pray every day for that hedge of protection around my children my grandchildren. Lord, watch over them. Give them health and uh, help them on their job. Show them favor. Praise the Lord. You need to pray for your children and your grandchildren. And God will bless them. And, and if you stay in the Lord and uh, work with Him and study with Him, He will make sure He blesses you too. He's our provider. Praise the Lord. I love that. He provides for us no matter what. You know, if you're in serving with the Lord, He still takes care of us when we're out in sin. Because He took care of me. He watched over me. When I was doing some awful things and stuff, like I tried to kill myself, and he was the provider. And uh, he didn't let that happen. Praise God. And uh, when I was out partying and drinking and stuff and thought I was having a good time, that's not good. And, you know, I don't want to have no part of it now. Even when I see it on TV, I just get up or I just close my eyes and pray. I don't like to even watch shows that's got a lot of drinking and stuff in it. But you're supposed to love the sinner. You know, if we're... we're Drinker, come in here today. We have to love him and let him come on in and uh, pray for him so that he gets salvation. Praise the Lord. He's our comforter. I love that. He comforts us no matter what. When we're weary, when we're tired, when we're on the edge, things like that, you know, and we feel he's our comforter. You go to him and he comforts you. He's our corrector, like I said a while ago. He will correct you. Yes, he will. He, he'll, he'll tell you. He will tell you you've done wrong, and I'm glad he does because I don't want to go and do anything to harm the Holy Ghost working in my life. And he is Father. He is Abba. I call him Daddy. I can sit up on his lap, lay my head on his shoulders, and cry out to him, and he hears my prayers. I praise the Lord, and he knows my heart. See, y'all look at me, but y'all don't know my heart. You don't know how I feel. But God knows. God knows what we're going to say before we even say it. Yes, amen. Oh, he's powerful. <coughs> and we need to get to know our Bible no matter what. We need to. Don't let that book stand on a shelf with dust on it. <coughs> get a desire. And you can't have too many Bibles. You can have Bibles all around your house. I have one in my bedroom. I used to have one underneath my pillow. Uh. Brother Steve told me to stand on my Bible one time. Steve Young, he told me to stand on my Bible. He said, you stand. He said, you stand and wait on the Lord. He said, and uh, I did, and I kept that Bible underneath my bed, and the Lord moved. And uh, I thank the Lord for that. And every one of y'all are blessed. You are ought to be thankful. You have your children in church. You have uh, your spouse in church. You know, I'm not... I'm not stopping and saying it's not going to happen because Bobby's, Bobby's a good man and he's a good-hearted man. He's had salvation and he's worked in Iwana and worked in other things, but he's just lazy. Because I get lazy if I stay out of church right now, but Bobby's not lazy working. Lord, forgive me. I'm glad he's not here. <laughs> he's a very hard worker. 
but uh, he just wants to stay home. He says what he wants to do. He said, God can work with me at home, baby. I said, I know. I said, but you need to fellowship with your brothers and sisters, and uh, you need to spend that time worshiping the Lord, you know. But uh, <coughs> that's about all I have. <coughs> oh, go to Nahum on uh, trust, Nahum 1-7, on trusting God. I just written down in such a little letter, I just happened to see it. Word, word. Nahum is in the New Testament. <coughs>
body Jesus in our home and we're going to have a new body. We won't have a body that gets tired and weary, but we'll have a whole, complete, glorified body. Meekness is based on the humility and denotes an attitude toward others in keeping with due denial of self. Temperance is better rendered self-control, literally by holding in with a firm hand or control of the self-life by means of the Spirit. He's given us the fruit of the Spirit to walk by and to live. You know, He's given us everything. He really has. He died on Mount Calvary. He took a terrible beating. He had a crown of thorns on his head. He had, before that, he took a terrible whipping, lashing out of his back for our healing. And we need to believe it and, and stand on it and be firm. And he took the nails on that old rugged cross. But praise to God, on the third day, he rose again. On the third day. And he lives in our heart and our soul. If we invite him and stay humble and come to him, you know, we need more of God in our life. Anybody got anything they want to share? Yes, they did. And I thank Amen. God for my kids. Thank Amen. Amen. Humble. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord is so good. He is powerful. And I'll tell you another thing. You need to get you some paper and uh, put down names that uh, you want to pray for. List them and pray for them every day. Put down uh, blessings that the God of heaven has blessed you with and thank him. You know, we need to fast more. Praise the Lord. We need to ask God to help. As soon as you try to fast, you're going to see a cherry cheesecake that looks awesome. But you're going to have to just deny yourself and ask God to help you. You have to deny yourself. But I want to say I love the Lord so much. He's done so much in my life. He's answered prayers. When I was in sin, he saved my soul. He washed me with that blood of Jesus and made me whole and complete. I thank the Lord for this church. I thank the Lord for Brother Derek and Sandra. I thank the Lord for all my sisters that come to pray for me and we have prayer. I thank the Lord for Brother Ken and his Revelation Bible study. I praise the Lord for everyone here, even the little ones. Our church is going to grow. We're just going to have to be determined to get up, get on that phone and press to invite and uh, just keep on. But I love the Lord, and y'all pray for me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good Sunday school lesson. Give the Lord another hand. Praise the Lord. Amen. We need to learn to trust and obey. Amen.